Samsung is back. Samsung, you are back. And LG Display, stop the FOMO. Do you refer to missing out on Samsung's latest technology that's getting all these rave reviews? We're talking about QD OLED and specifically that TV model S95B. It's so good. People are canceling their Disneyland vacations so they could buy this $3,000 TV if it's a 65 inch size. And Classy has changed his mind about getting the 83 inch G2 and getting this 65 inch S95B or maybe the A95K instead. Ultimately, QD OLED is more than just a game changer. It is so disruptive that Samsung is doubling down to make it even better and less expensive. And what's LG going to do to respond? We're talking, this is not just incremental improvement over image quality. We're talking jaw dropping, visible improvements over anything we've seen before. Let's get into it. But first, let me introduce today's sponsor, WhoKeys. Yep, you just finished your big old PC Windows build. You have the best of the best. And sadly, you have less than $20 to your name. WhoKeys to the rescue. Use my code SF20 and immediate discount. Let's quickly go through the activation process after you've purchased Windows 10 on WhoKeys. Go to your WhoKeys account and select My Purchased Orders. See your order? To the far right, click on the button that says View Keys Codes to see the Windows CD code. At the bottom of this order where it says Code Card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on Settings. In the Settings menu at the bottom, select Update and Security. Select Activation, then select Change Product Key, paste what you copied from WhoKeys, click Next, click Activate, and you're done. You can download the Windows 10 Pro key, and you're up and running. But that's not all, folks. WhoKeys has keys for games, too. Steam, Origin, Uplay, you name it, you got it. Check out their sites. There are discounts for all sorts of stuff. And most importantly, you want to be productive? What about Office Suite? Yep, you can download a copy of Office Professional with my code SF20 at checkout and bam. Man, oh man, the Samsung S95B. What a game changer this is. We're talking resetting expectations, moving an entire tier ahead of the competition. So let's get into the specs. If you caught Keep It Classy Tech's stream yesterday, Classy is what we call him, seven hour stream. He went through the entire calibration process. Here are the essential numbers. 1500 nits in accurate mode. We're not talking vivid here. Filmmaker mode, 1500 nits. And in a 10% window, 1000 nits. Unheard of by any OLED. This is an OLED record. This basically tells me that this is the OLED technology that we've been waiting for. Although it's QD OLED, technically the backlighting system is OLED, so we can call it an OLED TV, and Samsung does call it an OLED TV, even though it is a generation ahead of any TV we have today. So speaking of the S95B, if you want to order it, Definitely, Robert Zone at Value Electronics is offering a four-year extended warranty on this TV if you tell them FOMO sent you without additional charge. MSRP is $3,000. Tell them FOMO sent you, and he will give you a four-year extended warranty on the S95B because many people are concerned. It's a new technology. I'm afraid it won't last four years. This will cover it. So that's something to think about. If you're afraid of being a first adopter and you think things are going to fall apart, Get it through Robert Zone of Electronics, who will give you that four-year warranty. Just let them know FOMO sent you. The quantum dot color converting layer has changed everything. It does indeed absorb and put out a lot more energy in terms of color, wider gamut, color volume, the reds, the oranges. It's just not my eyes. It is after calibration, still there. Check out Classy's stream. He's astounded. We're all astounded, frankly. And no, we are not Samsung shills. At this point, this is a game-changing technology. And yes, we are very excited about the Sony A95K. What can it do with a heatsink? Does it need a heatsink? Can heatsink do anything with it? But before we jump any further, I know you want to buy it today. And let's talk about the production yields. Samsung employees are so concerned that no one thinks this TV is any good. They're telling Samsung Display, please let them know the yield is no longer 30%. It's now 75%. So we're going to get a bit more panels than we expected, but capacity is not running 100%. Or is it? I mean, with all these rave reviews, Samsung employees don't realize how much we love this TV. So Samsung 
Excellent job. Everyone who has a reservation for an LG G2 at the 65-inch size, shifting over to the S95B because it's a similar price. Now, if you're looking at a larger size, you're out of luck this year. Samsung should be making larger sizes next year. Whether they will, we'll have to wait and see, but Samsung knows. This is the thing for 2023. Please, Samsung, if you're listening, produce that 75, 77, 79 inch, whatever you can get, get one size larger than the 65 inch. It will sell out. Question is, is it going to be expensive? And that's why they're working on lowering the price. Specifically, what they're doing is instead of two glass layers, one for the TFT and one for the quantum dot color conversion encapsulation layer, they want to take out that last layer, combine it with the TFT glass layer using inkjet printing. I thought they're using inkjet printing right now, but apparently maybe they're doing better inkjet printing with this new approach. But for sure, the reason is twofold. Reduce the cost by making it less complicated so it'll be less expensive for you all in the coming years and rollable. Now, no one's asked for rollable OLED, but it makes it thinner so that it can be more rollable. But really quick, let's talk about the two drawbacks that I noticed and Classy is noticing too, which is the processing of the color banding or the, some people call it the posturization. Ultimately, Sony, hopefully with their XR chip on QD OLED with the, with the A95K, I'm so excited, I'm talking way too fast. The Sony A95K with this XR processor should address any of that posturization color banding issue. And of course, upscaling of lower bitrate content. So, but it's a thousand dollars more and the motion may be a touch more, have more artifacts if you like soap opera effect. So if you get the Sony A95K, it should be better, but it's not a big deal. That's rare. It's just the level of color gamut is astounding and the brightness and apparently out of the box, it does follow the EOTF curve. It is that bright, which is like, wow, I'm losing a lot of luminous information even on the king of TV. So let's talk about the context. This change to the entire industry. Last year, just six months ago, the Sony king of TV, A90J, this is the king of TV. It won the shootout. Upon the release of the S95B last week, it's now irrelevant to the degree that it's $3,000. The S95B is $3,000 and the G2 is $3,000. The G2, LG, literally just released it in the last few days, in the last week. People are like, I'm sorry, it's the S95B for me. Let's talk about LG Display's response or LG Electronics. They are in big trouble. Right now, their biggest advantage, the LG W OLED, the older technology that we've grown up with for the last six, seven, eight years, it has just become a mid-tier technology. It went from king of TVs. It was on the A90J and on this year's G2, which I expected to win the king of TVs. If you remember all my earlier uh, podcasts, live streams, interviews, we're all saying this year the G2 will beat the A90J. And it probably will. We never expected the, a the S95B to not just beat the G2. We're talking crush it. Crush it in terms of brightness without a heat sink crush it in terms of color volume, crush it in terms of wide color gamut. That's visible. I'm not putting in BT2020 material. This is regular movie material that the OLED just could not get out that wide color gamut. I'm like, what? This is insane. So those of you who are thinking for $3,000, what should I get? At this point, the G2 needs to drop its price. So LG has to respond. First of all, the C2 is still a good buy because as it drops in price leading to Black Friday, it will end up around $1,800, $1,600. Okay, that's about $1,200 less than the S95B. I predict that Samsung doesn't have to lower the S95B's price from $3,000 to more than maybe $100, $200 off, $2,900, $2,800. But if you wait, inventory will still be restricted. Yes, I know their yield is now 75%. Thank you, Samsung, for working so hard and producing that yield. But their capacity is still limited. They did not max out the produ production capacity of the 55 and 65 inch, but maybe they did. Maybe they saw our videos, all of our videos. We're talking every reviewer who has had their hands on this S95B in their house, in their studio, reviewing like me. They're just staring at this TV and they're getting nothing done. It's that good. So 
we're all excited about the Sony A95K, by the way, but that is $1,000 more. That's $4,000. That really pushes you out of most people's budget. But the S95B, this is G2 level pricing, which is definitely reasonable as far as I'm concerned. This is what I expect from a $3,000 TV. Frankly, I think it's a great deal relative to what's out there for $3,000. We're talking Sony is going to end up seeing its X95K lose sales to the S95B. Well, you're saying, wait, that Sony X95K is super bright. Isn't that okay? Well, the S95B is also super bright. As a matter of fact, at a 1,500, 1% window, that X95K cannot get that bright. I'm going to tell you right now, it will not get that bright with color volume. Now let's talk, I know I keep on saying this, let's talk about LG displays or LG electronics response. They are in deep trouble. So they are looking at direct RGB OLEDs. Now they're saying, hey, we're doing this, we're looking at this for monitors. The reality is they better look at this for all their display technologies. Right now, I can hear people writing checks to Samsung Display for all their TVs next year. Samsung, ramp up your sizes. I want 77, I want 85, I want 97. Get it out there. This is the new display technology and forget micro LED for now. We know micro LED has two problems. One, production is just very expensive to get those micro LEDs into the actual glass substrate. More importantly, as you get over 1500 nits, it gets too hot. They haven't found a way to cool it down without a super loud fan. Micro LED has very, very limited if they cannot get the heat down. Because if you get a micro LED and it's at 1500 nits, then why not just get the cheaper, what we're seeing here, QD OLED. Because micro LED to be awesome, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 nits, not going to happen until they control the heat. So why don't you show that for now? Focus all of your resources, both Samsung Electronics and Samsung Display. Get this TV cheaper, larger, get it out there. But in the meantime, LG only has one shot at selling their OLEDs above 3,000, right? Anything above 3,000 has to be larger, like the C2, 77 inch, that's when you get the C2. And as we saw in my live stream, the, earlier this week at Valley Electronics. Check it out. It's only five hours. The C2 is so good, it renders the G2 a bit redundant. Yes, the G2 may have a little bit more of color accuracy out of the box, but ultimately the C2 is so close, I do not see a use case for the G2 for its price, other than it's a gallery series, it's more robust, it's built a little bit better. Right now, LG Electronics has an issue. The C2 is excellent, so excellent that the G2 really for its price, I'd recommend everyone get this 95B. And so now the G2 needs to drop in price. C2 needs to drop in price, move it down. But what does that render LG's OLED? It makes it kind of second tier. First tier is anything QD OLED. The top one, Sony A95K, because better processing with an amazing panel and a heatsink. What the heatsink will do, we'll see. Next is the S95B, same amazing panel without that extra Sony Magic processing, but so good that it doesn't make a difference for most people in the $3,000 range. And then next up is the C2. You see that? C2 at the 65 inch will be around 1800 by Black Friday. S95B, just under 3000 by Black Friday if it lasts that long. And then you have the Sony A95K at around 4000. This is your flagship tiers. And this is why Samsung is not promoting it. It will eat up the sales of the QN90B, which is only a few hundred dollars less. The, definitely the QN95B. Yeah, great. The one connect box if you need it. But it's more expensive than S95B. Does not make any sense to me. This is a better gaming TV than the QN95B. This is a phenomenal gaming TV. As a matter of fact, this is as good of a gaming TV as the G2. No, it doesn't have Dolby Vision, but... Who cares about Dolby Vision Gaming, right? And lastly, and this is the part that really hurts Samsung, the QN900B, 65 inch, $5,000. Well, yes, I'm gonna get it just to see how good it is, how bright it can get, but I don't know. I mean, there's a limit to what an LCD TV can do due to its color filter limitations. It cannot, it does not have the color volume. It does not have the wide color gamut. No matter what you do, LCD TV has already reached the limits of its color gamut. And we've always looked to LCD TVs for the brightness punch. S95B without a heatsink has it. Full field is around 215 nits is what class you found. And that is very bright. 
I know, the Z9K will get brighter in a full field, and that is pretty much it. Larger TV size, 75, 77, and above, yes, you'll have to go with the traditional WOLED from LG or the larger TVs from Samsung and Sony to get that extra brightness and the anti-glare. S95B does not have anti-glare. I didn't see it. It wasn't a very good coating. If there is, slightly more than the A90J, which essentially is nothing, right? Samsung is back. Samsung, you are back. And LG Display, last year was its first year of profitability. Selling OLED, maybe it's last. So just LG Display, it's got to do something different. It is stuck with WOLED. All of its invest investments, all of its resources, all of its R&D, everything it has done in the last two years is to ramp up production of the WOLED, right? The G2, the G3, the G4. They've gone from overnight sensation to yesterday's has been. And we're not talking about the Chinese coming in with their manufacturing capability. They're going to use WOLED as well. They're going to ramp up volume, but the Chinese we know will be less expensive. LG is supposed to be premium, but suddenly the premium tier is taken. You bump LG down, which bumps the Chinese high volume down. OLED for everyone. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Until next time, stop the FOMO.